Hello and welcome um, once again. So today let's look at the concept of forgiveness as a tool for healing. How can we use forgiveness as a tool for healing? Over time, people have talked about forgiveness and we often have to look at it from the angle of is it easy for me to forgive? Is it possible for me to forgive? How exactly do I forgive people who have offended me? Now these questions come up a lot and that's because people get hurt people get burned people get angry a number of times and they begin to ask themselves can i really forgive this person can i really let this go and i know this is tough i know this is um difficult but it's actually achievable and it is doable now let's look at the definition of forgiveness now according to loskin in his book forgive for good it says forgiveness is the journey of moving from telling the story as a victim to telling the story as a hero in that case you're not telling the story as someone who has been victimized or as someone who has gone through some hard knocks but you're telling as someone who has come out of it as a hero it means that your story changes so that it is you who is in control and not the person who has grieved you it is you who is in control and not your grievance towards that person it is you who is in control and not the things that has happened to you this is what forgiveness is according to Luskin. it's at that point where you change your story you tell your story from the angle of a hero and not from the angle of a victim another definition was by ruby bridges all where she says that to forgive is to set yourself free is to acknowledge that it does no good to hate to forgive is to tell yourself that look there is no good at me hating i have nothing to gain if i hate someone and so you come to that point where you tell yourself that hey at this point i cannot afford to hate someone anymore now let me read a story out to you susie was 48 years old when she came for counseling because she was born out of a responsible job all right so it took about three sessions for her to open up to her counselor it took about three sessions for her to own up and tell her counselor the real story all right now what had happened to Susie, 30 years before a man had brutally raped her now what exactly happened so she had given consent to the man and then they had a conversation going the man came she changed her mind and the man raped her now she spent three weeks in the hospital all right because she also had physical damages done to her by that singular act now there was a court hearing which was more traumatizing for her because at the court all right the man showed no remorse all right, when the man was asked why he did it, he simply said, look, we had established contact, right? She had given her consent, and then I got there, and then she changes her mind. All right, so the man felt, look, you cannot just come change your mind that way after giving consent, and he went ahead to rape her. No remorse, nothing. All right, and then he went further to say that, look, in the process of doing that, she even slapped me, she hit my hand. All right, the man felt in there to do justice to himself by raping her. Now, merely thinking of sex with a man makes Susie nauseous. Merely thinking of sex with a man makes her feel unsafe and unhappy. And so she went into overweight. She became very overweight just because she wanted to chase men away. All right. And so each time, each time she was overweight and she went in for checks, whenever she came back to a regular weight, she was having attention from guys. People were interested in her and this became an issue for her so she decided to remain the way she was now this Susie's story might be someone else's story watching me right now listening to me right now you have been at that point where you got raped perhaps and you still have that hurt within you all right and you have decided to change your body physique because of that i said to go overweight or you have said to lose so much weight uh I, I, I feel so much for you and I can only imagine what exactly you're going through. I can only imagine what your thoughts are at this moment. However, I want you to know that healing is possible. Recovery is possible. You don't have to go over with. Now, in Buddhism, there's a perspective to anger. And what that one says is anger is like comparing a hot coal uh, that you tend to throw at someone else. Now, the person holding the coal is the one who feels the pain. The person holding the coal is the one who feels burnt. Because even if you throw a coal at someone, it only touches that person at that moment, all right? But you have to hold it before you can throw it. And so you feel that heat the more. So that's exactly the way anger is. Anger is like a hot coal that you are holding. You feel burnt first before the person who... Um, 
and for the person who is supposed to get burnt, get burnt. Now, you'll be spending a lot of time and energy thinking about who is at fault in relation to your loss, and it's probably keeping you up at night. So, you have lost something, you have lost someone, and every time you wake up in the middle of the night and you are angry at the thing that's happened to you, you can't sleep, you can't even find some rest. Or it is probably distracting you at work, it is bringing you down or bringing you to a side that you've never seen before. It's getting in your way of trusting people. Um, you are not feeling any way positive around those with, towards those around you. Anger has a way of growing inside us. It has a way of shutting us down from all that we need to perform. And so you can't afford to let anger take a hold of you. You must take a hold of that anger because it grows. Anger grows inside of you. Anger grows from within you and comes to that point where it almost, almost renders you uh, to be something else, to be a shadow of yourself. Now, you would realize that your anger is not actually that person who has gotten you angry. No, you must realize that, that your real anger is right inside of you. And so it's probably... Your anger is probably not impacting those who have offended you at all. You are just angry and they are walking freely. Usually I tell people that, look, when you are angry and you allow it to linger, you allow it to be, stay within you, you are carrying a burden, you are putting a weight on yourself and the person who has offended you is not even paying attention to you, doesn't even know what you're going through. He or she is going about his or normal life. All right, so you can't afford to let anger weigh you down. So no matter how much anger you have, or you don't have towards people who have offended you. No matter how many hours you 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 spend brooding over those things that they have done to you, it does nothing to the person who has gotten you angry. So why not let it go? All right. So if you want to take action for something that has happened, take action. All right. If you want to do something to prevent it from happening to someone else in your family or those that you know, then do that. But do not sit down and brood over it. And of course, finally. What if you need to forgive yourself first of all before even forgiving that person who has offended you? What if you first of all come to that point where you do not hold yourself responsible for those things that have happened to you, for the hurt, for the loss that has happened to you? What if you have to first of all forgive yourself for you to move on? So it's simple. You need to look for forgiveness. You need to come to that point where you forgive yourself. All right. And forgiveness is not about letting the bad guy off the hook. Forgiveness is actually taking the hook out of your own heart all right so for you to forgive it means that you are taking the hook out of your own heart it's not that you are letting the bad guy off the hook now the interesting thing is when people offend you and you take actions right it doesn't stop the arms of the law from grabbing them but deep within you must come to that point where you forgive them and you let them go from within from within now, because our culture is stuck on punishment, our culture um, is a culture that insists that people must be punished for their misdeeds, all right? But the thing is, does punishment really change um, how we feel about these things? Does it, does it heal us, really? It may bring us that inner satisfaction that you are seeing the person suffering, but does it really heal you, all right, from that inward anger, inward pain, inward, um, inward grief that you feel? I guess not, all right? So, which is why you have to come to that point where you yourself as a person, first of all, have to forgive yourself and let it out of your mind if indeed you really want to make a headway with that. Now, forgiveness is the greatest gift we can give ourselves, I tell you. Don't do it for anyone. Don't forgive because of someone. Forgive simply because of yourself. Forgive because of your growth. Forgive because of your progress. Forgive because you need to move forward. Forgive because it is essential that you forgive, not because of the other person. You don't have to do it all at once, all right? You can do it step by step, all right? Start small. Forgive yourself gradually, gradually, gradually. You realize that you come to that point where it's totally gone and completely gone. Start by taking a very honest look at what anger or guilt has accomplished in your life. If you cannot pinpoint anything positive that anger or guilt has done in your life, then let it go. And then decide you want better. That your loved one would want better for you and most of all, that you deserve better. So tell yourself, I want better. My loved one will deserve better from me and I deserve better. If you're hurt because someone has taken the life of a person close to you, ask yourself this question, right? Will this person want better for me if he or she were alive? If the answer is yes, then go get that thing that will make you better. 
all right do not sit down and brood over it over and over let it go now there is there's an acronym that Lost can use in his book the acronym is heal and it talks about hope educate affirm and long-term commitment hope educate affirm and long-term commitment and this method um for example allows one to honor his or her feelings while holistically observing a situation and making a commitment for to strategies for addressing the hurt and open with and coping with these types of scenarios in the future now i use this model a lot of times even for myself when i am hurt or when i am grieving and that's hope i try as much as possible to align with um, um, some effectiveness of communication. When I have clients as well, I use it with them. I try as much as possible to see how we can align early enough in the relationship that we have um, as a therapist to clients. And even within myself, I also come to that point and I tell myself, hey, I talk to myself to understand and to communicate my feelings to myself and then wait. Next is educate. So I try to educate the client and myself, but I recognize that because I have limited uh, control over the whole communication process, Says. So I accept the fact that not all relationships unfold the way I want them to unfold. All right. So I usually tell myself, hey, Tolusha, you need to understand that this relationship may not unfold the way you expect it to unfold. Or well, take it one step at a time. Still go ahead to educate this person. Still go ahead to educate yourself. So educate yourself. Educate that person on these issues. Now, the next one is affirm. Now, you have the option to grow from your hurtful experience and you just have to grow. You can't afford to remain there. You can't afford to maintain that status quo for your relationship or your experience rather as the case may be so you need to reinforce your coping skills for you to move from that phase of your life you need to reinforce your coping skills for you to advance from that stage of your life and then you need to be committed you know that affirmation that you have done for yourself you need to be committed to that affirmation all right and all this so that you're able to grow steadily and make commitment for yourself all right now when I have to work with people who have gone through hurt, grief, and loss, I try to bring the tool of forgiveness as well. And that's because that for forgiveness is the is the is a step, is a step towards your healing. You follow us start by forgiving yourself because a lot of times blame comes in. Are I known? Are I known? Are I known? So you have to first of all forgive yourself and understand that look, you did the very best that you could have done. This still happened. So forgive yourself. All right. Forgive the circumstances around you that probably led to that event. All right, and then let it go. All right, but like I said earlier on, it has to be gradual. It doesn't happen overnight. And so don't be in a rush. All right, don't be angry that it's not happening uh, so early in your life. No, that happened. So you need to take it one step at a time and understand that it won't happen all of a sudden. It's going to happen gradually. The moment you're able to understand this, then you will know that it takes a while you get for... Um, it only takes a while for you to actually get to that point where you're completely uh, forgiven, all right, and that you're forgive, forgiving yourself completely. Next, I would like to talk about is you need to identify the hurt and the grievances that you feel. You need to identify what exactly or why exactly do I feel this way. You need to understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling. I need to admit that you're feel uh, why you're feeling that way that you're feeling. First of all, is understand why you're feeling that way. Secondly, is admitting the fact that yes, you're actually not feeling good with yourself. All right, you don't have to lie about it. You don't have to be angry about it. Just come to that reality that yes, I am not feeling good and I am really not feeling good. This helps you to address the issue and helps you to um, come to that place where you admit that all is not well and you're able to actually address the issue. Now, there's something that Desmond Tutu said, Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa, that I would like to read out to you. It says, forgiveness and reconciliation are not just ethereal, spiritual, or otherworldly activities. They have to do with the real world. Forgiveness has to do with the real world. And they are real politic because in the real, very real sense, without forgiveness, there is no future. Without forgiveness, there's no future. Without forgiveness, you cannot move forward. And so you have to forgive. You just have to come to that point where you forgive yourself. Yes, I'm saying this word repetitively because I need it to sink in. That if you really want to step out of that situation, really want to step out of that hurt, really want to get better and progress, you must make forgiveness part of your lifestyle. It doesn't stop 
the hands of the law from punishing the offender. But you as a person need to forgive yourself for yourself, not for the person, not because you don't want the person to be punished, but for yourself. So forgiveness in a sense is a powerful tool of positive psychology. A good trick is to genuinely and honestly from the heart say this to yourself every time or once a day. Now, this is what I want you to keep reciting. If knowingly or unknowingly, accidentally or on purpose, I have harmed anyone, I ask for forgiveness. If knowingly or unknowingly, accidentally or on purpose, anyone has harmed me, I offer forgiveness. I'll take that again every day of your life, all right, for you to move forward, for you to be able to forgive. Say this to yourself. If knowingly or unknowingly, accidentally or on purpose, I have harmed anyone, I ask for forgiveness. If knowingly or unknowingly, accidentally or on purpose, anyone has harmed me, I offer my forgiveness. Once you have this mindset, you are forgiving ahead of time. You have offered your forgiveness ahead of time. And so when you are hurt and when you get, get to that point where people harm you, you don't you are not looking for the forgiveness. So you just recite that to yourself. It brings you to that point of stability where it's okay, fine. All right. You may not say it immediately, but with time you realize that you have actually forgiven the person. So find forgiveness and the healing will be right at your doorstep. Once you come to that point where you can forgive, then you have healing just very close by. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it has really spoken well to you. Do not forget to subscribe and turn the notification button so you can get subsequent notifications of my videos. Also, are you in that stage where you actually need to heal from that guilt or from that hurt? You can talk to me. All right, send me a